Hello everybody and welcome to our New Year's Eve slash New Year's Day live. Um, it is my honor to bring in the word with you guys and I hope that it's life changing and I hope that it escorts you into the new year. This is TikTok. I'm about to log on to Facebook as well. And um, I hope that this makes sense to you guys like God brought it to me. Hello, good evening, and good morning, all at the same time. We are on 12-31-23. And I'm about to log into Facebook. Hello, everybody. Okay. Let's get it. Hi, everybody. We're gonna get started. I know I'm a little early, so we're gonna get some little gospel going. Okay. Y'all worship God with me really quick. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. <clears throat> As we get ready to close out a year, we think about the 365 days that we had in this year that God has literally been with us. He has never left us, not one of those 365 days. Even the darkest days, God still showed up and he showed you that he was the light. The days where we felt like we couldn't make it, God was still there. When our enemies turned against us, God was still there. Hmm. Happy New Year. I like to thank everybody that has been on this journey with God with me. You guys help empower me to be a woman of God and to live better and upright and to almost be like a role model for myself and then others and holding myself accountable to be a better woman. So it's been my honor to be here these 365 days this year. I'm so excited to see what 2024 has in store. 2023 came in like a banger and I don't know what else to say other than but God and I'm just going to start with a um a poem that God gave me and it's actually one of my favorite poems growing up and then I'm going to segue into the message I'm a little early because I said it was going to be like 11 40 11 45 so I'm like 10 minutes early so I don't really want to start the message completely so I just want to go ahead and give you the poem that God gave me. It's a short poem. And let's get to the poem. It is by one of my favorite poets, um, Langston Hughes. So if you're just joining in, it's going to be by Langston Hughes. Okay, here we go. Get um, Happy New Year. So, um... It's by Langston Hughes and it's called Dream Deferred. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? God is saying 2024 is going to be the year of the dreamer. If you can dream it, you can achieve it. He dwells in the deep. He wants to do something big. He don't want to do the little things because that's too easy. In 2024, I dare you to dream again. There were many dreamers in the Bible many prophets in the Bible, but there was one in particular who got persecuted for his dream. Who knows who that is? Who got persecuted 
for their dream. Hmm. I got time. I'm early, so I can wait. And I can play some music while I wait. <laughs> you see. Joseph. TikTok on it. Joseph. You got persecuted for the dream? Yes. For the dream. And interpretate. I'm going to get into that in a second. Yes. Um, Joshua. No, not Joshua. Joshua had. God literally just told him what to do. He had instructions the whole way around. Um, just like Moses. So Joshua is not so much. But Joseph, yes. Joseph the dreamer. There we go. There we go. Joseph was the dreamer. He had two dreams and he gave them to his brothers and his father. And yeah, so that's where we're going to be at tonight. We're going to learn about Joseph and he's going to segue us into the actual new year. So this is what I did. I was sleep, half sleep, trying to do everything God told me. And I wrote down all the wrong verses for um, tonight's thing. But God told me to look again. Because I thought I was prepared, but I wasn't prepared. God told me to look again. So then I went and I went to redo it all so I can have everything that I need to have tonight for us. Um, but God is saying, your dream will not be deferred. Your dream will not be deferred. I started off with Langston Hughes' poem. I'm going to end it off with that poem again because I want you to sit with that. What happens to a dream if it's deferred? If that dream never comes to pass or if you never dare to dream the big dream, what happens to that dream? What happened if Joseph never told his dream to his brothers? What happened if he just pushed that dream away? What would have happened? Would it fester? That's just a question that you're going to have to put in the back of your head when God gives you a big dream and it looks too big for you. I want you to sit with that. The title of this message tonight is going to be Never Give Up, Never Quit 2024. Never Give Up, Never Quit 2024. Joseph was the eleventh son of um, Israel, Jacob. He was the eleventh son of him. He was a dreamer, but he was also faithful. Joseph had every reason to quit in his life, but he never did. He never gave up and he never quit. No matter what he faced in life, he never gave up and he never quit. He never lost a faith. You're going to have to keep the faith. If faith is all you have in 2024, then that is good as gold. Stand on it and stand on it firmly. Joseph went down some long roads. One, he was a dreamer. God gave him a dream as a young boy. He went to his father, he went to his brothers, and he told this dream. From that dream, he got sold into slavery. Let me give you a little bit of scripture so you can sit with this and understand. One, in Genesis 37, 3, he had, got, he had got a coat from his father. Because Joseph is the 11th son. He's the last son. Um, I, well, the last son in this part because he had a brother later on. But he was the last son in this segment. Jo, um, Genesis 37, 3. It says, now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But his brothers, but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, they hated him and they could not speak peacefully to him. The way God is about to love on you this season is going to make a lot of people mad. A lot of people are going to be mad at 2024 at how God is leveling you up. But you've worked for this. You've sown in tears. You've got your harvest now. You've been giving away in silence. You haven't had your camera out when you've been giving. You've been giving to the needy. You've been giving to everybody. You've been giving your all. God saw it all. 
And God saw how when the going gets tough, you run to him and not others. You don't run to social media and post this on there. You run to God and you take it up with him. You know man can't really cure anything, but God can cure everything. And God sees how faithful you are. And you might not know the Bible like you need to know it, or you might not be in the Bible like you need to be in it. But God says the little that you do have, you tell it to anybody that comes around. You are a living testimony of what God can do. You're faithful in the little. So God is about to make you ruler over many, just like he did Joseph. But the brothers saw the coat and they began to be jealous of his status. He was born into that status. He was born into that status and they couldn't stand him. Hate and jealousy and envy is a very, very powerful demonic entity that will ruin any and everything if you allow it. It goes 4, 37, 4. But when his brothers saw um, 5, now Joseph um, had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. There we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, shall you indeed be given rain over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he had, he dreamed still another dream and he told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. At this time, the sun and the moon and the 11 star bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers and his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I bow and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept kept the matter in mind. Then his brothers went to feed their flock. His father rebuked him for the dream. His brothers hated him and envied him for the dream. No one could understand why Joseph would come out of his mouth at the 11th child and look at all his big brothers and even his father and say, I had a dream that you would bow down to me. Now, a lot of people say, well, maybe he shouldn't have said it. Maybe he should just kept the dream to himself. Regardless of if he would have kept it to himself or whether he would have said it, it still is going to come to pass. Because when God has a word over your life, when God speaks into your life, it shall come to pass. Now, he might not have went down all the roads that he went through to get to where he had to get to. Maybe not, or maybe he would have. We don't know. All we know is he was obedient and he told his dream to people that couldn't perceive his dream. Be careful of the people who try to dim your light so they can shine. Instead of them saying, well, it might be possible because God can do all things. I don't understand why God is giving you dominion over us and you're our little brother. But nevertheless, God, it's your will. It could have went like that. But instead, they were angry because they were the big brothers. And he was a little one and already he got favor with his father. How dare he have favor with God? Walking into 2024, you're going to have that kind of favor. You're going to have that kind of favor to make them angry by just telling what God has told you. If God told you that you're going to be ruler over many, they're going to say, where did you come from? Tell me you're about to rule us. If God says you're about to be mega, max, mogul, more, sovereign, whatever, they're going to be like, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are dreaming these dreams, coming around here telling us that you're going to do this? You just came out of nowhere. Huh. Sometimes nowhere can be spelled wrong. Sometimes we're spelling it N-O when it's K-N-O-W. Because God knows where you're about to go. A lot of people can't count because they didn't count you in. So he went to tell these dreams, right, to his brothers. 
And his brothers were so angry. If we come over to Genesis 37, 28, it goes to saying, um, the Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. He was sold for silver, 20 pieces. There were other people in the Bible that were sold for silver as well. Can we name some? Anybody can name anybody else in the Bible that was sold for some silver? Sold for cheap? For dirt cheap? Hmm. Let me see. Jesus, yes. Jesus is one. Who else? Jesus was, he was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Mm-hmm. We got one more in there. No, Judas sold Jesus. But same, same. Samson, there we go, there we go. Samson was sold for a thousand pieces of silver. Yes. Um, people don't see your value, so they'll sell you for cheap. They'll sell you for dirt cheap. They sold the Messiah for 30 pieces. They sold Delilah, sold Samson for a thousand pieces. And now here we are with Joseph's brother selling him for 20 pieces. You sold the Messiah. You sold the strongest man that ever lived, and now you're selling the governor that has literally is going to be saving the land for cheap. But let's not go there because they plotted to kill him first, but that was a little too much for them. You know, we don't really want to kill you, kill you, but we'll sell you into slavery so you can be whipped and beaten and raped and just sold for nothing and work like nothing for the rest of your days. That's what we'll do out of sight, out of mind. And they covered up the treachery that they did by grabbing his tunic of many colors, which they hated. And they got some blood and they put it on and they took it back to their father. God said, what is hidden will be revealed. They tried to hide what they did to their brother. They smothered it in blood and they took it to their father. What was stolen? Whoever stole it will have to pay back double. Dave um, and Joseph got a new coat. He got back more than he lost. And he got his dream back. And he got his dream back. Whatever you lost in 2023, write it down. Take it to God. Whatever you lost in 2023, God is saying he's going to bring it back double in 2024. To my understanding, it's 366 days in this year coming. God is saying that 66th day is going to be your double day. It says, Joseph told his brothers his dreams and they hated him even more. They envied him. Um, dream your biggest dream. God has the final say. If we come over to Genesis 42 and 6, we're going to talk about the introduction of a new Joseph. I'm going to give you what happened to him along the way. So he was sold as a slave. In a slave, he found favor with a man named Potiphar, who was a slave owner. He gave him everything in the land. He just couldn't touch his wife. The wife wanted him because he was very handsome and he had power and status even as a slave. But favor was everywhere and Potiphar was wise enough to know that favor followed um, Joseph. So he got him in his house. And when he got him in the house, because Joseph carried the favor, the favor was in the house. The wife saw it. She wanted it. She tried to sleep with Joseph. He wouldn't. He was a man of honor. He was a man of integrity. He began to run. She snatched his coat. She screamed that he raped her. Potiphar came home threw Joseph in prison. In prison, there were a baker and a chief, uh, something. And they had dreams. Joseph interpreted. They came up to the top. He said only, remember me. Two years passed. He was still in the, in the prison, still in the dungeon, still down there. And all of a sudden, Pharaoh had a dream. Nobody can interpret it. But he was remembered again. The baker was like, I know somebody that when we were in prison, he interpreted our dreams. I know somebody. Understand that this is what's about to happen. When you become an answer, they will find you. Joseph was an answer even in prison. He knew how to get to God. 
He knew that it wasn't him that was having the dreams. He knew that it was God. It was bigger than him. When he went back, he said, it is not me. It is not me that is interpreting this dream. When you get into these spaces, you're going to have to say these words. It is not me. Let me take this to God because I, I can't interpret anything. I can't do anything, but God can, but God can. So now he interpreted the dream or God interpreted it for him. He's rushed out of the prison and given new clothes. He was given the governor over all the land. This is where we enter in with Joseph, the slave. 42, 6, it says, now Joseph was the governor over the land. And it was he who, who, it was he who sold the land to all the people. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him and their faces to the earth. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let's pull it back. Joseph's brothers did what? What were they mad at in the beginning? What did the father do in the beginning? When he told them the dream that he saw them bowing down and the father rebuked him and the brothers hated him. But here we are. He's a grown man now. He done did prison time now. He done been a slave now. He done been lied and persecuted now. And now he got a new coat and a new title on his name. And the brothers are hungry because a famine hit the land, which he tried to tell them. A famine hit the land, but they didn't want to believe because a lot of people can't see unless they believe unless they see it. But here they are bowing down to the brother they don't recognize anymore. Because remember, they sold him as a boy. They sold him as a child. So they don't know what their grown brother looks like anymore. And he looks like not even what he's been through because now he has honor on his name. He don't look like the slave shackles that they put him in. He don't look like the chains and the whips that he's been through. He don't look like running for his life, trying to get out of that house, escaping the wife that wanted to do something with him. He don't look like the prison cells that kept him in there for two years for a crime that he did not commit. He don't look like what he's been through. He don't look like he's been persecuted by his brothers and lied on and stripped of his coat of many colors. He don't look like his past anymore. So they think they're just going to see a governor to get some favor. When the favor was in their house in the first place and they didn't recognize the favor. So they sold the favor for 20 pieces of silver. They sold it. Hmm, my God. It's going to come to pass. Whether they like it or not, it's going to come to pass. His brothers were shepherds by trade. They herded, they herded sheep by trade. And they didn't recognize they had a black sheep in their household. They didn't recognize that they had that one that God would break heaven and earth to come get. They didn't recognize that they had that one. They didn't recognize Mm, let me keep going. Said their faces, they bowed down to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly, roughly to them. Then he said to them, Why do, where do you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Je Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them. And he said, you spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, No, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. Joseph was taunting with them because he knew who they were, but they did not know who he was because he was waiting on the moment to reconciliate with his brothers. He loved his brothers. He looked up to his brothers. He don't understand why they sold him. But hate and jealousy... Unless you're that kind of person, you really don't understand why they're hating on you, why they persecute you. But when you walk with God, you're going to be persecuted anyway. But you're going to reign with God. If you're persecuted for him, you're going to reign with him. This is Joseph's reign. 
and you are about to reign for everything that ever happened to you. Every lie that's ever been told about you, how people were just been funny, laughing at you, mocking you, talking about you, saying you really finna live sovereign, you finna live off the land. You really finna quit your job and pursue this ministry? You really finna, you really finna, you really finna get married and not cheat and settle down? You had all the girls, you had all the dudes. You really, you really, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because I messed around and found out that it's me, the generational curse breaker. And it's not going to be broke until it's broke with me because nobody before me could do it. I can do the impossible because I know that I am sent me. And when you know that I am sent you, you have God behind you. And if God is before, before you, who can be against you? If God is for you, who can be against you? We got three minutes until the new year comes in. And I'm going to go back to Langston Hughes. I'm going to go back because a lot of you guys are going to have to go back to what God has told you. You're going to have to go back to that dream. You're going to go have to go back to your first love. If you haven't had the relationship with God like you know you need to, you're going to have to go back. A dream deferred. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? Your dreams are about to explode. You're going to dream again. You're going to live again. Dreams do come true. Dreams do come true. We got one minute until New Year. We got one minute. Dream your biggest dreams, baby. Dream your dreams. God is about to exceed them. God is about to exceed them. I need you not to be afraid of the big dreams. I need you to embrace the big dreams. We're about to have a new year. Well, we got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Welcome until your new year. Welcome to your new year. Welcome. Happy New Year, everybody. God is about to do something for the dreamers. He's about to do something for the dreamers. It is your year to dream. And it is for God to make it happen. He didn't know how the dream was going to come to pass. He didn't know entirely what the dream meant. All he knew is he had a dream. All he knew was that he had a dream. And he told that dream. And he told that dream. And God did the rest. God is saying, I'm setting it in motion. I'm setting it in motion. I need you to write the dream down and make it plain. I need you to write the vision down and make it plain. It is time for you to dream again. Dream, Joseph, dream. They might not like it, but they can't stop it. And it doesn't matter how many people are against you. Just know if God is for you, no one can be against you. Heavenly Father, I speak peace, abundance, and prosperity over their year. I pray that the dreams and visions that you give your children begin to come to pass. I pray that they're not sold out for silver or gold. I pray that their enemies are at bay. I pray that they walk into 2024 rejuvenated, knowing that you're for them. And if you're for them, no one can be against them. I pray that their dreams begin to scare them because that's when you're in the atmosphere. I pray that it begins to scare them because that is when you're in the atmosphere. You can do the little dreams, God, but I want you to do the big dreams, God. 
the impossible dreams because it might be impossible with us but it's not impossible with you god you're going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask think or even imagine <coughs> Father God, come into our lives. The ones that don't have a relationship with you, Father God, I ask that you sit with them and they know you again and they know you as their first love again. They begin to turn back to you, Father God. When tough, ha when rough, the, when the world gets rough, they run back to you. They come to you with their problems, Father God. They realize that they are nothing without you, Father God. That addiction has to bow. That pornography has to bow. That um, that. That poverty has to bow. Everything that came up against them has to bow, Father God. That joblessness has to bow. Homelessness has to bow. Everything has to bow when your name comes, Father God. I don't care what's picking his head out. It has to bow, Father God. It will be under our feet. It will be under our feet. We walk into this year knowing that you are for us. That a thousand may fall at our right side and ten thousand at our left, but none will come near us, Father God. No poverty, no death, no destruction. That is not our portion. I pray Psalms 23 over your life that you will see at that table. You will see your enemies. You will be eating in the presence of your enemies. I pray Psalms 23 over your life. I pray Psalms 91 over your life for all of 2024. That God will take you under his wings. That he will hold you. And that he will know you again. And you will know him again. I pray Psalms 71 over your life. I pray all the Proverbs that your wisdom will come dwell with you. And put a crown on your head. And you will have understanding and the knowledge to know what to do. And what not to do. I pray Romans 8 and 18 over your life. And Romans 8 and 28 over your life. I pray that God comes in and dwells with you and finds favor with you. And you find favor with God. And he puts you in these rooms with great men. And the rooms wouldn't be there if you weren't there. I pray that you don't live small anymore. That you don't just pray the small prayers. God, please let me get this job. God, please let me pay this bill. God, please let the children do all right. But you start saying, God, make me the building. God, make me the millionaire. God, make me. The, uh, make me. God, make me. You don't need anybody else's finances because God is saying, I have the currency. It's the ever flowing abundance in your life. It's an ever-flowing abundance in your life. No longer will you have to worry about where your help is coming from because your help comes from God. I say this. Dream, my babies. Dream. Dream, Josephs. Dream. They can't hurt you. They can't delay you. They can't stop you. Nothing that they can do, if, even if they sell you into slavery, even if they plot to kill you, they can't stop the dream from happening. They can't stop the dream from happening. So dream, Joseph, dream. Dream. God gave you the dream because no one else can carry that dream like you. No one else can carry that dream like you. Dream, Joseph, dream dream watch what God do for you I love you all I pray that this message was a blessing I pray that this message was a blessing and I pray that you're walking into 2024 a dreamer a dreamer God will do the rest all you gotta do is see it God will do the rest that's all you gotta do. Watch what God do. He didn't need any help from Joseph. He didn't need any help from him. All he needed him to do was to dream it. God, we're open and we're ready. We're vessels, God. We're empty vessels. Fill us up with you, God. Fill us up with you, God. Fill us to the brim, God. 
It's 2024. My name is Lindaria Watts Mobley. My title is Reverend and Pastor. It is my honor to welcome you to the new year. It is my honor to speak to you guys just like this in my living room until God decides to show me a big dream. Thank you all for believing in me and following me and walking with me and talking with me and dwelling with me. This is my introduction to my new year and your new year. And we're going to be some dreamers. We're going to dream again. We're going to live again. Not the little life, but the big life that God has in store for us. I love you all and have a great night. Mm -hmm. Thank you.